Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Flat Out Stupid, The Jaronism Files. Our feature film tonight is called Arrow and Water Refraction Trick, How It Shows Flat Earth. Little spoiler. Now, uh, first, pay attention to the word trick. It's not even a very good one. And um, how it shows flat earth, eh, it doesn't. All right. Well, why don't we head on in and see what we've got. Ignition sequence start. Two, one... What's going on, everyone? Jaron from Jaronism here, and we've all seen the arrow behind the water trick before, right? Well, let's pick it apart a little. Watch the arrow closely and tell me, does it drop or rise? Clearly, the arrow drops. Here, I'm going to lay an overlay over to show that the image does definitely appear lower. Why? Well, because we're looking into a more dense medium. Wow. The dishonesty starts a lot earlier than I thought it was going to. The statement you see on the movie screen behind me is patently untrue. Looking from a low density medium to a more dense medium does not cause items to appear lower. What Jaronism is alluding to, incorrectly, is refraction. Let's take a quick look at how refraction works. Refraction, bending of light, happens when light passes the border region between two materials, each having a different index of refraction. The greater the difference between the index of refraction of each material is, the greater the amount of refraction that will occur. But you know what else helps determine the amount of refraction that occurs? The angle of incidence, or the angle with which light hits that border region. If the angle of incidence is 90 degrees, we witness no refraction at all. The farther the angle of incidence varies off of 90 degrees, the greater the amount of refraction we will see. If we look at Jaronism's glass of water here, the first thing we notice is that it is not a perfect cylinder. This means that the light must be interacting with at least one and possibly both border regions, at an angle different from 90 degrees. That is what is causing the image to appear to shift position. Not just because light is moving from a low-density medium to a more dense medium. The interesting thing about Jaronism's demonstration here is that if we were to invert the glass and somehow manage to keep the water inside of it, we would see the arrow rise instead of drop. Somehow I don't think he's going to demonstrate that for us though. Let's place a horizon line behind the glass. Since our air can be seen as a liquid, and when we look off into the distance, could this be the cause that the horizon lowers? No. Asked and answered. Your model is not representative of reality. Hmm. Does this curved horizon match our reality? No. We're looking at a slight downward angle through the glass of water, which is acting as a lens, thereby causing the distortion we see in that image. Once again, this is not representative of reality. Close, but we have a problem. You see the arrow and the horizon are flipped. The water flips the image, and that doesn't happen in reality. Well, or does it? Let's switch glasses here to a square glass. Haha, ha, there we go. Now we see a dropped horizon in the distance, and we see a non-flipped image. In fact, we're starting to see some Fata Morgana effects as well. So, exactly how does this compare to reality? Surprise, surprise, it does not. Much like the glass you used earlier, the sides of this glass are not parallel. This is what is causing the image to appear to drop. Seal the top of that glass and invert it, then let's see what your image does. As for your statement of the Fata Morgana effect, no. That is when we see a mirage that appears to be a city or some faraway object hovering above the surface of the Earth. Uh, that is not what we're observing here. Uh, 
This is distortion caused by the curve at the corners of the glass. Well, when we're on a beach looking at the horizon, we are looking through a large slab or a box of air with increasing density. Whoa, hold on here, little guy. If you're looking out parallel to the surface of the water, you are not looking through an area of increasing density. Barring atmospherics, the density of the air should be about the same for the entire trip. Which means where you stand is the least heavy density as you look out and across the water. The density increases as we have seen. Images will drop down. No, no, and no. And if you really want something interesting, here's some food for thought. When you're at the beach looking out or across the water, you're in the lowest amount of atmosphere, trying to see something that is through the heaviest amount of atmosphere. Unless there's a tremendous temperature differential, that's just not true. And things will appear to lower. Now, when you are looking straight up from where you are, you're actually in the heaviest or densest part of the atmosphere, looking into the least dense part of the atmosphere straight above your head. So to look through air that's increasing in density, you just have to look in front of you, but to look through air that is decreasing in density, you look up. Okay. So when you understand both those predicaments and that they coexist, then you'll understand that you really kind of do exist in your own personal atmospheric dome. Now, we have seen that viewing objects through a square glass results in that object being seen lower and that the object will not be flipped. Now we saw earlier that it's possible to use a glass of water to show an object appearing lower than it actually is through trickery. But we also know that the curved glass that causes images to be seen lower as well also shows those images as reversed. That is because the curved glass is acting as a lens. If anyone would like all the details on why this is, uh, I'd be happy to make uh, another video in the future dealing with optics and refraction. Uh, just let me know in the comments below. Hmm. Anyone have anywhere where they've seen things flipped in our reality? Yes, I'm talking about the counter-rotation of the stars. Okay, so there's a giant lens in the sky that only works when you're looking south then. Okay. But there is so much more that this could help us uncover. Now, you could simply call it crazy. That's crazy. Because it goes against your deeply held religious beliefs. And so you may choose the mainstream explanation instead. Then you'll be told that light must be a wave and a particle. Does that make sense? They'll tell you that light is always traveling at the imaginary speed of light. Of course light is always moving at the speed of light. Just like a train is always moving at the speed of that train. I think what our friend Jaronism here is confusing is the speed of light in general with the speed of light in a vacuum, or C. But it slows down? How does it exit at the speed of light if it slowed down? Well, it didn't slow down. See, it became a particle, and then, still tracking at the speed of light, it decided to dance with other particles before exiting again as a wave at the speed of light. And here we have Jaron not understanding the properties of light. Breaking the second law of thermodynamics. Hmm. Second law of thermodynamics. Huh. Second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of any isolated system always increases. I'm not quite sure how that applies here. Is it possible that Jaronism is hoping that his target audience has no idea what the laws of thermodynamics actually say? But who's counting, right? Say we have a box and we add water. Then we shoot a light beam and it slows down when it hits the water, but then exits at the speed of light again? Well, you can believe that if you want. I find it to be madness. Even though you just demonstrated refraction, which is kind of dependent on that? Typical ad hoc nonsense, theories pushed as fact. And we need to now think, is it possible that we are seeing things flipped in our personal atmospheric ordered domes? Word salad. Well, just another question that needs testing. But what's clear? Well, clearly all things in the distance drop off because the atmosphere that we view through is increasing in density. Repeating something fictional does not make it true. Have you been talking to Ken Ham? So, geodetic surveyors, they definitely take this drop into account, right? Since the drop you demonstrated can only be shown through trickery, no. No, they do not. They take it into account, right? Oh boy. Nope. Actually, they don't. Even though we just proved it, 
they simply ignore it. Those two glasses of water were supposed to be proof. That proof should be ignored. The only thing your little experiment proved is that you do not understand refraction and you do not understand what causes it to occur in the real world. Wouldn't want a little truth mucking up your 400 year old deception now, would you? That was your big gotcha? That, that was it? Calling out a deception that you have failed repeatedly to demonstrate? So that's my first video back from my wonderful strikes courtesy of YouTube. Poor me, sniff sniff. I'm such a bully and all. So being censored as I am, I am now doing some live shows and posting some videos only on Patreon. Those are for the patrons only. You can join and support me if you want for the cost of a cup of coffee. All right. No reason to continue. The rest of this is just a commercial, which eh, that's okay, I guess. Yeah, this video was not as much fun as, as previous ones. The uh, it, Basically, his premise was right up front. We knocked that out. And then we just had to listen to Babel for the rest of it. Eh, hopefully I'll put a little more effort in next time. Anyway, thank you all for joining me once again. And I hope to see you all again very soon. Mm -hmm.